Hello there, I'm Dr. Sarah Bohm, and today I'm going to provide some information about pain management. There are several videos here that address pain due to a serious illness. I want to help patients and families understand more about managing pain from their illness. I hope that by learning more, there's a decrease in the pain and decrease in the suffering with improved pain management. We've established that the pain experience is very individual, very personal. I think everyone is aware that pain comes from multiple sources and it's a warning system to the person that there's an injury occurring. Pain greatly affects a person's daily performance and well-being. Pain, when not well managed, can prevent a person from participating in activities, from fulfilling their daily needs, and certainly limit their quality of life. Because the pain process is very complex, knowing the origin of the pain can help tremendously in appropriately and successfully managing that pain. We cannot ignore that there are many contributors to pain and each of these must be addressed. This includes mental health, and spiritual needs, as well as what's happening to the physical body. Pain is well known to impair a person's ability to interact with others, get good quality sleep, stay active, and can even alter appetite. Ongoing pain can certainly interfere with a person's cognitive function as well. Optimal success with pain management is dependent upon addressing all of these. In a previous video, we discussed the many questions for a full pain evaluation. Please refer to that information to prepare for your clinician visit. There is a specialty that deals with chronic pain, and these are pain management specialists. They have received specific training to manage difficult to control pain that is not related to malignancy and not related to a terminal process. For patients with serious illness and for patients with a limited life expectancy, the symptom management experts are the members of the palliative team and the many disciplines on a hospice team. They address a patient's total pain, the staff of these disciplines are highly trained across a broad spectrum of medicine to address the special needs of this patient population and care for the person as completely as possible, taking into account the body, mind, and spirit. This approach is imperative for optimal pain management and maximizing a patient's quality of life. The patient is the center of those teams that addresses pain. Your primary care or specialist will assist you with determining that a pain specialist or a palliative specialist is best suited to address your needs. In addition to pain that they have from other medical issues or prior injuries or changes related to age such as osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, or an old injury, patients with serious illness may have a new onset pain or worsening pain that's related to the progressive disease process. It is estimated that up to 50% of community dwelling people over the age of 60 have daily pain. An even greater percentage of people living in nursing homes and assisted living environments experience pain. Some patients will complain of having pain in multiple sites and it can be from multiple origins. Consider someone that has osteoarthritis of their hands, some degree of paralysis from a previous stroke, a chronic cough from heart or lung issues, a healing rash from a recent shingles episode that has lost a significant person in their life and recently moved to a new environment. This individual likely has pain in their hands, their muscles, their back, their chest, and skin, as well as significant heartache from the loss and the change that they've had in their life recently. All of these pains are real and they are all mediated differently because they're from different sources. They all deserve to be addressed. We've discussed many treatments, non-pharmacological as well as medications. I want to stress the importance of each of these as with just one aspect of pain being treated, the physical body, we're not going to be very successful in managing a patient's pain. Education of the patient, their loved ones and caregivers as to the cause or causes of pain is also important as addressing each one of these contributing elements of pain they're part of that team. It is all part of being successful in the management of pain. Understanding the cause of pain and the goal of each therapeutic intervention aids the patient in achieving good pain management. Many times when treating pain with medications, we will use more than one medication class as this helps us address the pain from different vantage points. Not every medication works the same way within the same class, and different people will have different responses to, different to the same medication or different medications. A medication that works for one person may not work as well for another. Just as with treating hypertension or diabetes, there are many different blood pressure and blood sugar medications available as we don't all respond the same way.
In palliative medicine, we address pain from that total pain aspect and we use more than one intervention and typically we will use more than one medication. There are numerous different classes of medication used to manage pain and some that treat pain you may not typically think of as pain medications. There's a separate video specifically on pain medications that's going to follow this one. Having detailed information about the pain can provide a lot of assistance in selecting the best treatment or the best medication. Treating total pain, we use every modality that we can that's available to achieve our goal of improved quality of life. And there are numerous modalities available. Neuropathic pain is best treated with anti-seizure medications and antidepressants. Neuropathic pain is caused by damage to the nerve, causing that nerve to be more excited. It's often described as pain in the skin, a strange skin sensation that's uncomfortable, burning, tingling, shooting, numb sensations are common complaints with neuropathic pain. These nerve sensations may be worsened and just totally out of proportion to something like light touch or having clothing brush against the skin. Sometimes it can be significant pain with something that really shouldn't cause pain at all. Other people may describe symptoms when they are sitting, just being still, resting in bed, reading a book, so it could be from an activity or, like I said, something light against the skin, or when being inactive, they can have neuropathic pain. Nociceptive pain is when the body informs the brain of damaged tissue, torn or cut skin, a bruise or injury, skin that's been burned or exposed to chemicals. Nociceptive pain is typically best treated with other medications such as acetaminophen, anti-inflammatory medications, or opioids. This type of pain is often described as sharp, aching, or throbbing. It can be deep and feel like pressure sometimes. The first stage of nociceptive pain is transduction, when something happens and it is converted into a chemical signal inside of the nerve. Next is transmission. The signal gets to your brain by triggering different nerves and synapses along the way. Then modulation occurs where the brain decides what to do with that information. Perception is the last stage, and that's when the brain tells the body what to do. And typically that's going to be something like to get away from that source of pain. Take your hand off the stove, get your foot out of the icy water, let go of the electric fence. Sometimes you might lightly rub the injured area to distract the signal that's going to your brain. That's the gate control mechanism, and it can help reduce a little bit of the pain that your brain is perceiving because it kind of drowns out the, that white noise of pain. These are all physical pains. In our example, though, we discussed other kinds of emotional and spiritual burdens, and these truly do affect a person's perception of pain as well as their tolerance of pain and their reaction to the physical pain that they're suffering from. As the physical pain is affected by the sense of spiritual and mental well-being or lack of well-being, patients that are suffering from those issues that are not being addressed, they can really have significant trouble managing their physical pain. We have many adaptive methods to reduce pain and for many people when treating pain. The synergy between two or three medications given in smaller doses provides better control than a higher dose of just one medication. Likewise, the synergy between two or three treatment avenues provides the best results with improved lifestyle and satisfaction of the patient and family. Understanding the disease, having alignment of appropriate treatment to help patients, and having achievable goals allows for better success. Patients report there's tremendous satisfaction with achieving success in pain management, and it has a positive effect on their ability to tolerate future pain that's being caused by their illness. Just as with needing more than one medication and using more than one therapeutic intervention, those are all warranted. Cure is the optimal intervention, but for many chronic disease states, we simply just don't have that option of cure. Thus, managing the pain and limiting side effects is crucial. It is important for patients to be open-minded about every treatment, medication, and intervention is offered. Being biased about any of these will interfere with its efficacy. Certainly, understanding how the pain changes a person's body and how multimodal therapy can be beneficial for pain management is important. Occasionally, I do have patients that are reluctant to accept an option because of a stigma that they have labeled something with. For these conversations, I encourage patients to please give the treatment a chance. 
please allow some time and have an opportunity for a trial as it might lead to improvement in how they're feeling. It certainly does help when patients believe in their treatment. The belief can help with achieving success with a rate of 30% of improvement or more. We've established that pain wears on a person and the effects of multiple therapies working together can help patients maintain their resilience to the constant drag from the pain and the emotional wear on a person from facing serious illness. Therapy is a very important part of this, not limited to just physical therapy, but includes occupational, recreational, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Meeting mental health needs and addressing spirituality are equally as important. The most successful patients are the ones that use every possible intervention to optimize their pain management, to live each day as fully as possible while being open-minded and optimistic. We must always have hope and we should allow hope to change over time. Change is the only thing that remains the same. The person's symptoms and their pain threshold is very personal. Patients need to tell us about the changes in their daily life and what they are feeling and thinking. We need to know at what point they need their pain more aggressively treated. Sometimes patients have had events in their life that cause them to be more sensitive to pain. Other times, patients may be more resilient, thus the pain threshold can vary, sometimes even day to day. Sometimes this is for a known and an obvious reason. Other times, the cause may not be so apparent. Managing pain is ongoing and dynamic, and it takes a high-functioning team that communicates well and often to address it. Remember, the patient is the center of that team. Accurate information is needed before choosing the best treatment for pain. Knowing the cause of pain and impacting factors, as well as understanding the importance of addressing total pain in the early stages of the disease process, can carry through to having better ongoing success as the disease process advances over time. When patients and families have a good understanding of the causes of pain, then the expectations of treatment and the symptom management is all going to be improved. Palliative team members will validate that a patient has real pain and each discipline of the team plays a specific role to manage that pain. The family and patient also play a role in that pain management. The patient and the caregivers are often given and expected to perform homework to make sure that all the bases are best covered for optimal pain management. We want patients to understand that complete elimination of pain without any side effects may not be possible when only using a pill. The goal for pain management is for the patient to have the ability to interact with loved ones, be active, have a good night's rest and sleep well while maintaining a good appetite and maintaining adequate calorie intake. We want to manage pain as best we can without overshooting the mark. We don't want patients to have side effects of feeling fatigued or drowsy or being unsteady. To accomplish this, we work with the patient on an ongoing basis to start, modify, adjust, and correct. Sometimes we may even stop a treatment measure and change to something else. Keeping track of your symptoms, knowing how you've responded to various treatments, and then giving that feedback and information to your physician and team is really important for them to have that information. Help your team adjust your treatment as time goes by. We want each day to be the best it can be and keep hope alive and allow it to change. Thank you for your suggestions and questions. I appreciate your comments. I'll see you next time and we're going to address medications. The next one is going to be a longer one. So buckle up before that one starts and get you a cup of tea to sit and listen. Bye now.